So, in this question here, we have an example of a rather complicated number property problem. It says, what is the smallest integer that 10,584 must be multiplied by so the resulting number is a perfect cube? Now, before I plunge into uh, an explanation of how to solve this problem, I think maybe a little bit of vocabulary might be useful. So first of all, this idea, what is a perfect cube, is somewhat important. So on the GMAT, there's two related math uh, properties. One is perfect cube, and the other is a perfect square. So first of all, a perfect square is when you take the square of a number, an integer, the result is also an integer. In other words, if I take the root of 16, the root of 16 is 4, and since the root of 16 is an integer result, I know 16 is technically a perfect square. Now, the same thing could be applied to a perfect cube. A perfect cube is basically the cube root of an integer, like 27. The result is also an integer. For example, in this case, it's 3. So, um, a kind of a trick of how to look at if something is a perfect square or a perfect, uh, perfect cube is to think about the prime factorization. For example, with 16, the root of 16 is equivalent to the root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is the idea that um, you could use a, a trick, which is 2 on the inside is the equivalent of 1 on the outside. So in this case, I see two 2's on the inside, 1 2 on the outside. 2 2's two on the inside, 1 2 on the outside. So 2 times 2 equals 4. So um, this could be applied to also with a perfect cube. For example, the cube root of 27 is equivalent to the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3. And in this case, it would be 3 on the inside is 1 on the outside. And this could be applied to the fourth root of something, the fifth root of something, and so on. For example, if I had the sixth root of something, it would be 6 on the inside is 1 on the outside. So, keep that in mind. That should help us with this particular question. So, what is the smallest integer that 10,584 must be multiplied by so the resulting number is a perfect cube? Now, once again, I would say this is kind of a handful of information. It might be difficult for someone to come up with how do you solve this problem. But one thing I've noticed from experience is when you're working with number property problems and you see a big number like 10,584, the easiest thing to do is just break it down to its prime factorization and then see if you can understand the question better. Usually everything falls into its place once you're looking at the prime factors. So. So, in this case, um, I have 10,584. And if I'm going to break this down to its prime factorization, what I want to do is take big chunks out of the number. For example, in this case, I can see this number is clearly divisible by 9. How do I know it's divisible by 9 is if you take the sum of the digits, the sum of the digits is a multiple of 9, so therefore the whole thing is a multiple of 9. So let's start out with, as I said, divided by 9. 9 goes into 10 one time. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 left over, bring down the 5, 9 goes into 15 one time, 1 times 9 is 9, the difference is 6, bring down the 8, 9 goes into 68 7 times, 7 times 9 is 63, the difference is 5, bring down the 4, 9 goes into 54 6 times, so I'm left with 1176 times 9. So at that point, I'm going to divide, I'm going to break down 1176, 1176, once again, I'm going to try to take a big chunk out of it. First of all, can I divide it by 9? No. Can I divide it by 8? Yes. The basic rule for divisibility by 8 is very simple. You look at the last three digits. If the last three digits is a multiple of um, 8, the whole thing is a multiple of 8. And the trick for that is basically thinking about blocks of 200. I know that if I count by 8 up to infinity, there we go, 8, 16, as soon as I get to 200, it just starts all over again, 208, 216, and so on. So, 1,176 is 24 away from the next block of 200, which is 1,200. So, since the difference is 24, which is a multiple of 8, the whole thing must be a multiple of 8. So, I divide this by 8. So, 8 goes into 11 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. So, 3 left over, bring down the 7. 4 times 8 is 32. The difference is 5, bring down the 6. 
um, 8 goes into 56 7 times. So I have 8 times 147. When I look at 147, the first thing that pops into my mind is this could definitely be divisible by 3. Once again, with divisible by 3, you look at the sum of the digits, like the 9. So 147 can be divided by 3. So 3 goes into 14 one time. Uh, sorry, 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. Difference is 2. Bring down the 7. 3 goes into 27 9 times, so I have 3 times 49. So at that point, I can take a look at the prime factorization. I see I have from the 9 a 3 times a 3, plus the other 3 here. So times another 3. In the 8, I have a 2 times a 2 times a 2. In the 49, I have a 7 times a 7. Now, if I go back to the question, maybe things will make a little bit more sense. So it says, what is the smallest integer that 10,584 must be multiplied by? So the resulting number is a perfect cube. Now, as I said before, with perfect cubes, the idea is 3 on the inside is 1 on the outside. So since I have 1, 2, 3, 3s, that's okay. It would give me an integer result. I have 1, 2, 3, 2s. That's okay because that would give me an integer result. The problem is with the 7s. I'd have to multiply the 7 times the 7 times something else so that the result of is a perfect cube. Clearly, if I multiply this by 7, I would have 3 on the inside is 1 on the outside. So therefore, the answer to the question must be 7. Now, if they changed the question just a little bit and said, what would the smallest number be uh, that 10,584 must be multiplied by so the resulting number is a perfect square? Well, I would get to the same point where I have basically the prime factorization of 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 times 7. But this time, since I'd be looking for the result as a perfect square, I know 2 in the inside is 1 on the outside. So I have two threes, I have two twos, and I have two sevens. The problem is I have one three left, I have one two left, so therefore I'd have to multiply this by another three and another two, so therefore I would have two more threes and two twos, so therefore the answer must be six.